name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction into a tool called the FMEA, or the Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. <clears throat> uh, in Lean Six Sigma, we use this FMEA as part of four tools. Uh, for root cause analysis, qualitative root cause analysis. Uh, those four tools are the SIPOC, uh, the input map, the CNE matrix, and the FMEA. These are used in sequence from the SIPOC to the input map to the CNE matrix to the FMEA. And they work in conjunction with each other to understand what a problem is, uh, what's causing a problem from a qualitative standpoint. Now in Six Sigma, uh, we don't just use qualitative data, we use quantitative as well, but we're focusing on just the qualitative side of, of uh, solving a problem in these four tools. Uh, we have created brief introductory videos for each of these tools on our website. So uh, kind of an introduction like we're giving here for the FMEA. So let's get into the actual FMEA. You'll see it here on the screen. <clears throat> uh, first, I'm gonna start off uh, and explain the columns. All right, so in the FMEA, uh, the columns you see are from process step all the way through uh, RPN, which is called risk priority number. <clears throat> this is really just two thirds of the whole FMEA. This is the analysis side of the FMEA. Uh, the other third actually is that uh, attached on to this, you don't see it, uh, it's called, uh, it, it's basically the improved part of the FMEA where we make the improvement uh, and then we understand what was the impact of that improvement. So we are only going to focus on the analysis side. <clears throat> the columns, the columns are, uh, the first two columns, process step and process input, um, are, are really what we fill out first. This information uh, we get from our CME matrix. Our CME matrix is uh, a tool where we prioritize our inputs to find out which ones are the most important inputs. Uh, and then we move those inputs over into the FMEA and we analyze them. So uh, what we see here is, is um, in our uh, process analysis example, uh, that we use for our green belts uh, and our black belts in, in our class. We have an analysis example that basically shows a whole Six Sigma project, uh, the FMEA being part of that. So that's where this data comes from. <clears throat> uh, in, this, uh, in this data, we have found out in our process that um, setting up of the workstation and standard work instructions along with applying the peanut, uh, the peanut butter and the jelly using the construction tools, those are the most important inputs to us. I'll take you back just uh, quickly. The process we're focusing on here is, um, is from a company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Incorporated. It's a fake company, one we made up. Uh, and they are experiencing uh, uh, cost for construction of their peanut butter and jelly sandwich that is higher than their target cost. <clears throat> so from the uh, previous tools, SIPOC, input map, CME matrix, we've determined that, uh, again, set up standard work instructions, uh, applying peanut butter and jelly using the construction tools. Those are our, our key inputs that we need to understand <clears throat> uh, and improve. So again, the process step and process input comes from that CME matrix, okay? The next column is our potential failure mode. And this is basically saying, how does our input, our process input fail, all right? And you're gonna see here in a few minutes that um, there can be many failures to one input, all right? There's a one-to-many relationship there. <clears throat> uh, and, and we'll get into to what that looks like. Okay, so failure mode uh, we have here. Uh, one of the failure modes is that the standard work instructions aren't there. They're not available. Okay, and that has an effect on our process. That has an effect on our process. And the effect is uh, constructing the PBJ to operators perceived standards. 
All right. So basically what they think the standard is or what they developed internally because they don't they don't produce from a, a written standard. It's just um, uh, on the job training where they've learned from a previous person how to do something. Excuse me for that. Uh, and then we have severity. All right, I'm, I'm going to take you through the scoring mechanism here. Severity, occurrence, and detection. We'll come back to potential causes and current controls. So severity, occurrence, and detection are, are the scoring mechanism uh, to understand how severe that potential failure mode is to us. Okay, and we score on a one to 10 scale for each of these. I'll, I'll go back to these in just a minute. <clears throat> Uh, our next row, I'm sorry, our next column is potential causes. Potential causes are basically uh, what causes the failure mode. So the flow is what causes the failure mode to result in the effect. And again, potential causes and uh, potential failure effects and failure modes, they all have a one-to-many relationship. So my failure effect could have several causes could cause that failure mode to result in that effect. All right, so you're seeing here that the, the FMEA could, can expand. All right, from one input, one input could equal uh, several pot potential failure modes. Uh, each potential failure mode can equal several potential failure effects. Uh, one failure effect can equal but several potential causes. All right, now, current controls. Current controls, it, it, in this column, we don't expand. In the other columns, every time I have a, a new potential failure effect, that goes in a different cell, all right? That's why this expands, but because we wanna know uh, the impact of each. Now, in current controls, we don't do that. We, if we have more than one current control, we put that in one cell, uh, all of our current controls if we have multiples. Current controls are basically how well do we detect the failure mode, all right? The best current control actually uh, not only uh, not detects it, but it prevents it, all right? That's the best control. Now, uh, when we get to, to more severe current, con uh, current controls or, or detection, um, we, we find out that the defect happens. Now we need to understand how well do we detect it, all right? Do we detect it right when it happens? Do, do we detect it, <clears throat> you know, several steps down, down the system or does the customer detect it, okay? <clears throat> and our, our score, our detection score, is really based on that. Okay, so let's go back to score, scores real quick. Severity is correlated to the potential failure effects. All right, it says how severe will the effect be? It's on a 1 to 10 scale. All right, I, I'm not going to go through each of the numbers in the scale um, because we have a tutorial for this that is really in-depth. Uh, and helps you to understand exactly how to fill this out. This is really more of a, a high level introduction to the uh, FMEA. So again, severity is correlated or related to potential failure effects. How severe is the effect? Occurrence is correlated or related to potential cause. How, how many times does a cause occur, okay? And current controls, is, is basically correlated to detection. How well does the current control detect the failure mode? Uh, and that's how those, those three are, are uh, defined. Now, to get the RPN or the risk priority number, you take the severity times occurrence times its detection, and you will get the risk priority number. Now, I also told you that you know, this can expand. So you'll see here that I've um, uh, hidden some rows. So I'm gonna unhide those rows. Oops, and that should be set up. Let me uh, retype that, sorry. So you'll see here, I've got set up several times. I've got standard work instructions several times. 
And then I've got non-available twice and out of, out of date twice. These are potential failure modes. Because somewhere in here, we get down to where each of the, each of the uh, rows are unique. All right, remember how I told you this can expand. And when it expands, we have to backfill. We, we have to fill all the way back because eventually we are going to uh, sort uh, on the RPN, uh, the highest RPN to the lowest RPN. If we do that and we don't have every row and every column filled in, then we're not going to really know where some, you know, the uh, potential cause or the failure effect. We might not know where that came from when it comes to process step and process input. Okay, so um, hopefully you have a better understanding of the FMEA, the failure modes and effects analysis. Um, we have more in-depth lesson on the uh, on the FMEA along with a uh, certification on our website. There is an actual uh, module that we have. It's, it's uh, more in depth and it comes with a quiz at the end. Uh, once you pass that quiz, you're, you uh, get a certification note uh, saying that you understand uh, that tool, the FMA tool. Uh, if you're watching this video directly from YouTube, I will put that uh, information in the description uh, for that tutorial. If you're watching this video from one of our articles, our blogs on our website, um, it will be down in the blog. So uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. My email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please give me a call and have a wonderful, a wonderful day.